And joining me now is Macomb County Executive Mark Hackle. Mark, it's always good to see you. Christy, thanks. And you know, when I know that you're going to come and you're going to talk to me, I know that you're always going to bring some kind of uh, some kind of swag here promoting Macomb. <laughs> and when I was driving up to the Mackinac Policy Conference, I did see your billboard again. What is the thought process behind that every year when you when you go ahead and you put something up along I-75? It's all about marketing and branding. And again, Macomb County, we really have never done that. And so my first year here, I kept thinking to myself, I came as the sheriff thinking I'm going to run for county executive, kind of getting a feel for what goes on on the island during a policy conference, never had been there. So I thought, okay, the next year I'm going to be the county executive. The conversations were always about Detroit, the issues, the problems they were facing, and I thought, okay, on the way up, we got to try to change the conversation and get people to realize we want to be part of the region, but who are we and what are we all about? So we did that very first time. We put up some billboards talking about Macomb County, the Make Macomb Your Home, what that really meant. It really got out from uh, that understanding of who we are, not just a blue collar county, but there's a lot more to offer. So that was the, the, the purpose of it. Do you find that business is starting to listen? What uh, kind of oh. change or development have you seen in the last three years that has changed Macomb County? Really? Absolutely, I mean, the incredible growth for one of the fastest growing counties in the state of Michigan, and I don't think just by population and people buying homes, but investment. If you think about it, I don't know of any other county in the state of Michigan or even in the country that has seen $2 billion investments from automotive industries, Chrysler with the Sterling Heights assembly plant, in Sterling Heights, a billion dollar investment a couple years back, and now the announcement of the General Motors, the Tech Center, which has always been a part of a rich history, investing a billion dollars in the city of Warren. Those are statements, we're here to stay, and I'll tell you, that, that means a lot for the future of Macomb County's economy with automotive. Talk to me a little bit about um, regionalism in terms of working with your counterparts in the other counties, and you said, you know, we got to make sure that Macomb gets in here and that's part of the conversation. Have you found that you've been able to enter those conversations and be taken seriously? Yeah, and it's always about the value-added proposition. In other words, we realize you know, we're going to be competitive to some degree, and we got to make sure that we're adhering to, you know, some of the standards that those that elected us uh, are, are expecting of us. So whether it's talking about the Great Lakes Water Authority, talking about regional transit, the zoo, no matter what it is, we need to make sure there's value added in Macomb County, but we understand the importance of the region because we have to come together to compete with uh, other regions around the globe for, you know, for some of the world resources, if you will. So defense, we've realized that isn't just a Macomb County thing, although it's key industry in right. Macomb County. We've reached out to try to get others to realize, you know what, we want to expand it, and if there's defense that want to come and relocate to Macomb County, I'm okay if it's Detroit, Wayne County, Oakland County, even St. Clair County for that matter, if, uh, if they're going to relocate somewhere from elsewhere uh, in Macomb County. So being regional is extremely important, but we had to understand who we are and how we added value to the region as well. How does the growth of Detroit and the resurgence of Detroit affect Macomb County? The neighborhoods are going to be a continuous uh, challenge for the mayor and his administration to figure out how does he deal with the neighborhoods. And right. Uh, you know, the services provided. But if you look at the downtown, the investment with the Gilberts, uh, obviously uh, in seeing the Illiches, it's incredible advantage to all of us. Why? Because you have to have a core urban center really for vitalization of a, of a, of a region. And uh, for Macomb County, selling a home and or a business coming to Macomb County, they want to know what else is going on around there for the quality of life. And if you think about arts, entertainment, food, and uh, even the, the sporting venues that we have, adds a tremendous value to the entire region. So I'm excited about what's happening in the investment in the downtown area because it adds uh, to that value for all of us. All right, and talking about Detroit and Detroit's emergence and bankruptcy, there's also a regional part that Macomb County is playing this with the Regional Water Authority. You've had some issues. We talked about this last year up, up here on Mackinac, and this year it's still an issue. We're, we're heading towards that, that deadline near the end of the June or in, in July where they're supposed to sign off on that. What seems to be your holdup or what's your problem with this deal? I think that it, it, it all goes goes back to, I think, the lack of transparency and the concern that people have with public officials today. You know what, they just don't trust what's happening with their money. I look at Proposal 1, which is a prime example of my concern dealing with this actual water authority. Proposal 1, the people looked at it and thought, you know what, at least it was public discussion, you know, with the governor, the legislature branch, and uh, you know what, they realized what it was and they just didn't like it because they didn't like where the money was going. Well, the same thing with the Great Lakes Water Authority was all behind closed doors, under a gag order, and people really don't understand what's happening, and it, it completely lacked transparency, which it should not have done, because this is a vital issue for the entire region, and it's a you know it's a resource that all of us have to have, and it's water. So to say we can't talk about it, we can't discuss it publicly, when I know what we're talking about isn't really true. Let's face it, it was there to try to solve a bankruptcy problem, not solve an efficiency problem with the system, not trying to figure out how do we protect ratepayers. It was to solve. So be honest about it. Let's be honest about really what does that $50 million so what mean? Should, what and should we're not be doing 
concern? Is, is it that you haven't seen certain financials about this deal? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot, and it's hard to explain. See, that's the problem. They put it all under the CAG order, secrecy, we can't talk about it, and put you in a position where you're going to have to vote yes, because if you're one of those people that's saying no, people are going to want to know why you're saying no. And then you've got to explain the entire process, what all these intricacies of that memorandum of understanding means, and it confuses a lot of people. And I'm telling you, if the voters had an opportunity to really see this, invest a lot of time into it, and make a decision themselves as to whether they want to vote yes or no, I have confidence they'd be as just as, as uh, upset about this and probably vote no on this like they did with proposal one. All right, so then how do you find some kind of deal here in the next three weeks, four it's weeks, or challenge. do you? I'm one of those that would rather go back to square one without the courts, without the bankruptcy, and without the state involvement and get back to how we really have regional discussions, whether it's regional transit, whether it was the Cobo Authority. Those discussions were very public, and they were with those that really were the participants on behalf of their respective uh, residents or the people that elected them. So the mayor, uh, the three county executives, need to come together to discuss how do we really want to create a Great Lakes Water Authority that focuses on efficiencies of the operations of that, but also is one that's going to be very focused on protecting ratepayers and making sure they're getting the best bang for their buck. That we're not spending money in areas that were not intended for the, for the actual rates to go to. It's interesting, uh, you brought up just a little while ago trust and trust in our elected officials. What do you think needs to happen in order for people to have that trust again in our elected officials? I think the biggest problem we're having today is the, uh, the whole concern about partisan aspect of uh, your role. If you're elected as a Democrat, you're supposed to behave as a Democrat. If you're elected as a Republican, you got to behave as a Republican. And the question becomes, what type of Democrat? What type of Republican? Are you going to be extreme to the right, extreme to Don't the left? Don't you think people are tired it's, of those labels I am, I am in tired. that conversation? I'm tired of it. I am absolutely tired of it. I'm, I'm one of those people, it's like I'm a very moderate, independent individual and uh, have worked extremely well with the governor because I think he has that very same mindset. It's unfortunate though because some people feel like they have to act a certain way to get reelected or if they're term limited to go to another position in public office. The reality is, you know what, you need to just focus on doing the right thing. You got elected by a constituency and uh, again, uh, you're here on behalf of the state of Michigan as a representative of, of some. What is the best decision moving forward? Rhodes is a prime example. I was going to ask you, what do you, think, what do you think should be done in, in terms of what kind of hybrid deal? You got uh, some Republicans that are very uh, adamant that, you know, no uh, additional monies has to uh, be added to the solution, and that's just not a reality. You got some that are, you know, are, are, are Democrats saying, you know what, money cannot come out of the you know, current funding that we have within the budget. That's not a reality. So somewhere in the middle, they have to come together to come to realization, sure, there's something somewhere in the budget, money is going to have to be redirected, and yes, there's got to be new monies coming from someplace to figure out how do we solve this problem. The Senate plan was the best plan. We all supported it, but then when it got to the House that last time, they came up with this proposal that the people were just absolutely, uh, you know, disgusted with, and that set us back. Well, it's Public now kicked back to the legislature. And don't you think that they've, they're the ones that are going to have to figure it out? It should not come back to the people. I couldn't agree more. That was, that was their responsibility to move forward. And I'm telling you, that Senate plan was the one that they should have moved forward with. And I think the people would have been very satisfied with that decision moving forward. And we'd be fixing roads right now as you and I are speaking. It's prime, it's prime construction season, right? It is. Prime opportunity. And, uh, and it needs to be done. All right. Mark Hackle, Macomb County Executive. It's always good to talk with you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Christy. Appreciate